Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Todd with Wither and Bloom Studios and we are going to engage in our Dagger Heart Session 1. I don't think it's going to be a one shot because it's a lot and we like to keep these episodes down to about an hour, but we're going to try our best and if we have to break it into two, so be it. Listen, I want to thank you all for watching our Session Zero. Like, we were really blown away by how much um, sort of feedback we got on that. And we're hoping that by... <laughs> Oh my god! Yikes! That was a leak. How about that? We are hoping that by trying to play test and break the game as requested by the folks at Critical Role, we can offer some feedback. And we've been talking about the game a lot, so um, we're gonna dig into this. Um, a couple things I want to point out really quickly to you guys. Um, um, one. I'm coming to the game with minimal preparation on purpose. I have scanned over the um, pre-packaged adventure that comes with the Daggerheart downloads, um, but I want to sort of see how well a DM can just jump into a game without an enormous amount of prep. That's always been an interesting thing for me as a DM, is like, how much time do I need to spend prepping for the game? I know, I enjoy that stuff too, but sometimes it's nice to just have an impromptu game. So that's the first thing. Second thing is we have two more players with us today than we had the last time, and they have both rolled up characters and are ready to go, and we'll get to them in a second when we do introductions. Um, three, I am interested in how the um, learning experience for us, where we don't know what we're doing, but we're gonna talk through a lot of situations, will help to sort of um, maybe deliver uh, some understanding of the game to you. So uh, that's what's on our plate. We're gonna get started on this right away, but let's go around the table first and we'll each say who we are and what we're playing and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, Nate, you wanna start us off? Sure. Uh, I am playing a Clank Wanderborn uh, who is a druid um, and his name is the Environmental Interface. Mm. It's Rose. Yeah. Uh, I'm Olivia. I am playing Morel, and they are an underborn fungal wizard. Hi, I'm Rich. I am playing the Swaddler, and I am an underborn fairy rogue. I'm Garrett. I am playing Ginkgo Fury. He is a wildborn ribbit sorcerer. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Eric. I'm playing Wisteria Pyre. Uh, wild born simia guardian. Excellent, excellent. And you want to know what I just realized? I have Nuter, who was my build during session zero, yes, who was sir. a Galapa bard. <laughs> um, and I promised that I would read the poem that inspired that character. Oh. So I'm going to put that at the end of this video. So if you're interested in seeing Nuter, the Galapa <laughs> bard, read The Bagpipes Who Did Not Say No by Shel Silverstein in the voice of Deckard Kane. Uh, stick around to the end of the video. <laughs> wow, what a treat. I bet you can't wait for that. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but my nipples are hard. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. Coming oh out God. strong. Oh. Coming out right. strong. <laughs> okay, so like I said, we're starting from the prepackaged adventure, so let's settle in. Let's kind of get our minds wrapped around this. I've got a little bit to read to you, so. Um, All right. You know, without further ado, why don't we dig right in? All right? Let's do it. All right. Dig in. This evening, your party finally made it to the Sablewood, a sprawling forest of colossal trees, some say are even older than the forgotten gods. It's a place renowned for two things. It's sunken pathways that provide trade routes for many travelers and merchants, and it's unique hybrid animals. Even now, from within your carriage, you can hear strange sounds. The bird calls of the lark moths, the croak of the lemur toads, the sittering of a family of fox bats in the underbrush. One of you is driving the carriage. Who is it? Not me. Fire. Okay. I don't know how to drive. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, now Pyre, Yes. Pyre. Pyre. You've noticed something unique about the look of the trees here in Sablewood. 
What is it? Can you describe something unique about the trees? Why do these trees have long purple tendrils hanging from them? Hmm. Okay. So, as your steeds pull the carriage around the tight corner and you sort of look out the carriage window and see the trees that are strewn with the very purple tendrils that Pyre describes. Um, the tight corner is such that one wheel comes off the ground for just a moment and you see an overturned merchant's cart laying sideways in the path before you, blocking your way. A scattering of fruits and vegetables litter the trail, and from around the side of the carriage steps a Strix wolf. A large creature with the body of a wolf, the face of an owl, and large wings adorning its back. It finishes chewing its meal, the hand of a dead merchant, as it stares at you, curious, trying to judge whether you're friend or foe. Then you see, following clumsily behind, two small pups watching their mother cautiously. From within, the rest of you feel your carriage come to a stop. What would you like to do? I would like to take uh, the hide action. You're currently inside the carriage. In the carriage. Mm. So you're, is it dark outside? Mm -mm. Oh, it's like it's daylight? It's daylight. Oh. It's actually, so, sorry, it is evening, okay. so the sun is setting, okay. but um, it is not completely dark. Okay. So it's just looking at us. It's assessing you. Okay. Is, the, is there anyone else out in the carriage besides Spire on the... I'm assuming this is like kind of a, a coach. I feel like it I'd be coach. sitting there. Yes. What's that? I feel like I'd be sitting there. Like edge of my seat mm. watching everything. Well so the carriage is enclosed. So oh. um, unlike a sort of buckboard where it would be open like oh. a wagon, this is an enclosed carriage. So you're all sort of comfortably seated oh. inside. Oh, would other? you have been on yes. driving the carriage? You're driving, yeah. so you're is outside there, the carriage. Is there only one seat? For the driver, outside. no, there's two, so, so we, I want to be out there. Okay, so yeah. the okay. two of you are I'm on like the edge of my seat, taking everything in. Type Pyre sees the, the Strix Wolf, Strix Wolf, mm -hmm. Strix Wolf, yeah, Strix Wolf, mm -hmm. and um, kind of instinctually does the parental <laughs> I'm breaking the car, <laughs> yes. uh, kind of gets in front of Morel a little bit and locks eyes towards the Strix Wolf, okay, and watches. Intently. Fire, why are we stopping? What is it? Something's teaching its children how to eat. It what looks is like a, a fluffy dog. Yeah, what is it? A merchant. No, my inquiry was what is eating? <laughs> Somebody else want to field that one? I'm a little busy right now. I want to pet the dog. Are there, are there windows it's or anything? Not a dog. Are there are windows on the carriage. Well, yes. that dog. Can, I take, can I take a look <laughs> out? Can I look out? <laughs> You can't Fire just that said that something. Yes. I want to pet that down. Oh, pet that down. Can I pet that down? Can I pet that down? Can I, can I investigate it with Ginkgo? Can I look out? Yeah, you both can look out the window. Sure thing. And we, we see... You look, you sort of crane your necks around out the window, and just ahead of you on the road is this smashed, overturned merchant's cart. And you see this, this wolf-like creature with wings off the back um, sort of standing there, just sort of you know, tense in muscle, slightly crouched, the two young behind her, and she's just looking. Do I get a sense of their morality? Uh, so let's see, you could roll an instinct check mm. to uh, figure out if, I think it's instinct, am I correct on that? Yes. Yes. Sense navigate. yes. Would I roll both my hope so and So you're fear? gonna roll your two d12s. Now make, before you roll, have said. you decided which one is hope and which one is fear? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I got a uh, fear nine. So uh, a nine total with them. fear. Nine with fear. Total them. Oh, I total them both. And the higher one is what you would get. Plus your. Oh, so, so it would be five plus eight, and then it, your yes. fear. So it would be. Oh, so, so a thirteen with fear. A thirteen. Yeah. With fourteen. Fear. I have a plus one. Fourteen, fourteen okay. with fear. A fourteen with fear. Okay. So uh, first of all, I get to take. A fear oh, on no. that, and I'm uh, placing this in my beautiful abalone shell because I want to make sure that I have something really powerful to hold all of my fear tokens in. 
Uh, what was it you were trying to ascertain? I'm sorry. Um, it's morality. If it looks like it's um, aggressive, if it's just trying to survive, what's what's the vibe? It's intimidating for sure. Okay, but since that is a success, because I set the difficulty of this at a level that was relatively easy to ascertain, based on it, it feels to you as if it is on the fence. It looks like it wants to defend its children, but it doesn't seem to want to make the first move. And so therefore, I, you sort of believe there might be some wiggle room here. Mm. Uh, I sort of like, I my neck sort of just goes, <laughs> for a second I go, I got a question. Why are you so I got a, excuse me, I got a question. Okay. All right. Um, what are these uh, owl wolf like thing right over yonder? Uh, what, are, what what are they like in nature? Well, the, the one over there looks like it just doesn't want us to harm its kids. Um, uh, I can do like flowers. That maybe just like flowers. Don't, maybe just don't do anything. Or a strong gust of wind. It looks like it just eats. It's eating. Just it's it, trying to feed. Let it do its thing. It Most likely, it's more afraid of us than we are of it. Exactly. But let's just hold and not give any Can we pet Don't the dog? Morale. <laughs> Would your... you like to pet the dog? Don't pet the dog. But I want to Don't encourage the mushroom. <laughs> Can I get like my type of like instinct check sitting in the front? Sure. Like, well, what is it? Your, your instinct check, though. But tell me specifically what you want to, to sort of do, rather than the check you want to exercise. I want to establish if it's if it could be a friend. Okay. To me. So go ahead and roll an instinct check. Mm. Okay. That's a fourteen with. Fear. <laughs> 14 with fear. Now, everybody knows, I don't know if you know this or not, but if you should happen to roll doubles. 15 with fear. 15. If you should happen to roll doubles on your dice of any kind, double ones all the way up through double twelves, that is automatically a critical success. So always tell me if you roll doubles. Okay. It's a 15 with fear. A I 15 a with fear. Ah, yeah. I will take yeah, another fear token. I know. How am I? It's a 50 50 well, shot. Well, we're scared right now. So yeah. You you that are. And you have to realize that, that in sense. any kind of check like this, mostly when the action tracker is out, meaning when the action tracker comes out, that essentially means that we are into some kind of more heightened sense of action, right. i.e., combat. But when that is out, if you should either fail or roll with fear, um, the, the GM can actually now interrupt and sort of put something in play or act. That's not necessarily happening now, but um, you realize that, um, you know, given your sort of fungal nature, uh, you know, nature, it could be a friend. These creatures that you've seen in the past, while they are carnivores and they can be vicious, they are also not automatically somebody that's opposed to you. How close am I? I'm going to say that you're relatively close. Okay. Um, I'm going to look side-eye, like, at um, Pyre. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to be like, and slowly put my hand out towards the dog. Almost like, a, give me a little sniff, you wow. know? Okay. Pyre, Pyre looks over <laughs> and says, wow, it is a mother. So as you sort of reach out, very slowly, you offering. It appears as if the Strix Wolf is a little bit wary of your movement. Okay, so let's make our first roll to see how she's gonna react. Okay, <laughs> so um, I'm gonna say you use your presence trait. Okay, okay, because that's gonna kind of be your general overall presence to this creature, and I want you to roll your duality dice, okay. add your presence. And then if you want to, do you have any hope? You're supposed to start off with two hope at yeah. the beginning? Yeah. If you want, you can spend a hope if you want to roll to add an experience. If you have an applicable experience, I don't know. What are your experiences? Uh, my experiences are <clears throat> curiosity killed the cat, which is I am extremely curious. I want to know about everything. If I've never experienced it before, I want to experience that uh -huh. knowledge to me. I'm like a sponge. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So that fits. Um, and then take a picture, it'll last longer. I have a knack for retaining the knowledge and everything that I kind of ingest. All right, so if you wanted to spend a hope, 
and you wanted to use your experience, curiosity killed the cat. What do you have at that? Plus two or plus, plus one? Plus one. Plus one. Yeah. So you could also add a plus one to the roll. Okay. And one of the things that's encouraged in rolling the duality dice, just as a duality sort of, just as a okay. physical mechanism, is let's say you add that plus one, mm -hmm. right? And then you do you have, um, in terms of your presence trait, do you have any modifiers in presence? No. No. Okay. So your duality dice, and you spend the hope to use curiosity to kill the cat, add a token to the actual physical dice roll. So let's say I had to put plus three on my dice roll. Oh, you have I'd roll that. my dice with three tokens, mm -hmm. and then I'd have the dice plus the tokens. Mm -hmm. It kind of is a reminder of what you have to add to the oh, roll. I like that. I would but, need to. So are you, first of all, you're going to spend a hope to add the modifier. Yeah, why not? Okay. Why not? Go ahead. So I would subtract that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Scary. Oh, okay. So that would be eight with hope. Well, you mean you spent the hope to I add. And now she gets the hope back because she rolled with hope. You rolled with hope. I rolled with oh, hope. Oh, eight with hope. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you spent a hope. Yeah. But now you're going to get the hope back, okay. so don't bother erasing it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yep. That was that. So that's an eight. Yes. Okay. So we would call this, so basically <laughs> the, the this is a failure. Yikes. Okay. Um, but it's a failure with hope, right? Okay. Um, so number a one, you mark your hope. If I should say. <laughs> and with a heavy, deep, snarl oh, okay. that she sort of lets out. <laughs> Her back end hunkers oh, okay. down a little bit, right? And it almost looks like she's getting into a spring. Okay. But your sort of hopeful <laughs> sense about this, you know, sort of doesn't put you too much on edge. And as she lowers herself down, both of her pups climb up onto her back oh. and nestle in between her wings. And she has this eye on you and she's kind of like, okay. and then all of a sudden, she up into the air oh, okay. and she takes off up into a nearby tree and perches on a branch weird. and watches you weird. from up there. Okay, dog. But she looks like she has gone away <coughs> momentarily. Well, Gesundheit. That hurt my feelings. That hurt my feelings. Yeah. Bless you. Mm. Shut up. Sorry. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Dusty fucking tavern. <laughs> Stop it. I think if we yeah. don't touch the body, maybe we can pass on. Do you maybe. think if we search the corpse? It seems like her territory is all I'm worried about. Does the cart look... I know it was overturned, but did it look like the creature was going through the contents of the cart, or was it more interested in the flesh? Well... As you sort of look into this situation and you sort of look at the cart, you look at the contents and the vegetables and things that are strewn about on the road, um, you do notice that if there were any valuables in the cart, there don't appear to be any now, which seems odd for a merchant to some degree. Uh, you do notice that the driver, who is dead, um, sort of has a totally mangled arm. It looks like it's been chewed you know, and tendons have been sort of ripped out mm -hmm. on some level. Um, so this this Strix wolf has really kind of picked this guy apart, uh, probably fed her kids on it a little bit. Um, uh, do you want to investigate the scene a little bit deeper? Like, what do you want to do next? How close um, is the body? How close are you to the body? Yeah. Well, you guys, you guys are at close range. So um, you're probably within about 20 to 30 feet. So I can see the body pretty well? You can see the body. Can I see if the body, like, are there any pouches or anything hanging off of this guy's, like, belt? Uh, from a distance, it looks like there could be. I mean, the merchant is kind of, you know, he looks like he sells his wares. It probably has some way of keeping track of his other tools and money and whatnot. Right. So, mm. I'm going to stand from my seat, and as I do so, I'm going to, like, sort of, like, rotate my arm joints around a few times, just, like, it's just a reflex. I'm gonna step down and walk over, like, so I'm close enough, sort of, to this body, but it's still pretty close to the cart. And I'm just gonna, like, coax a little bit of ground water out of the ground and just leave a little puddle of water in hopes, in the hope that the pups might get some water. 
with their food as well. Mm, nice. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay. As he does that, I would like to. Um, would you say it's like shadowy in this woods? Yes, for sure. I'm gonna teleport to somewhere like an opposite tree line that the the creature flew up to. I'm gonna teleport up to the tree line, attempt to be a little hidden. Okay. Get a better vantage point. Now, for hiding, do you have a... Um, do you have... Hold on a second, please. Mm. Do you have something you can use that allows you to... Like, when we hide in this, how does your character hide? Well, f- uh, hide is under finesse. Okay. Um, yes. So I guess you would roll with the finesse ability. Garrett, how do we roll on I that? I have no idea. Hmm. I've never rolled Sawyer for D&D. <laughs> yes, I know. We have to kind of... <laughs> I mean, so I guess it would be a, a my I finesse versus the, the creature's yeah. instinct, possibly? It's something... Um, not necessarily. That's something I should probably read into a little bit deeper. Okay. Um, but you're attempting to stay out of view of this. Yeah, I'm teleporting from shadow to shadow. Okay. Okay, um, and tell me the ability for the teleporting. Let's let's read that just so um, we have it. It's it's my subclass called Night Walker, Shadow Stepper. You can move from shadow to shadow when you step into the shadow cast by another person or object or an area of darkness. Mark stress to disappear from where you are and reappear inside another shadow you can see within the range. Okay, so that's um, just really it. You're gonna mark a stress mm-hmm. on your character sheet to perform this. And that's going to kind of just sort of move you up into that space across the trail mm-hmm. um, from this from this creature. Okay. Okay. So you're kind of currently in that space. Okay. As I teleport up there, I'd like to kind of get advantage on like if there's any of the creatures around or how how like a better view on the thing that flew up there. Right. Okay. So why don't you why don't you roll? Um, why don't you roll? Shoot, I'm missing all my stuff here. Hang on. I think it's important that we sort of stumble through this a little bit because, mm-hmm. you know, why don't you roll an instinct roll for me and we'll have you take a look around. Jeez. Um. Let's do this. <laughs> a, a, a 21 with fear. A 21 with fear. This is horrifying. <laughs> That's like so many. Oh no. Well, I only have three. Wait till my little abalone shell fills. No. Oh, a 21 with fear. Fuck. I mean, right now things seem a little bit quiet. You can hear the general noises of the forest around you, but currently you don't really see too, too much. Um, How do they respond to that? That water. That water. Uh, cer- cur- currently, you don't see them responding in any way. Okay. Um, yeah, so right now, nothing. Copy that. All right, so uh, you manipulated the water. Mm-hmm. What are the rest of you doing? I'm staying in the cart. Uh, does it seem as if the cart can get around the other overturned cart? Or is the. Say that again? Will our carriage pass efficiently? Past no, you would need to move. Blocked. You would need to move the cart in its oh, current yeah. from its current location. All right, we all gotta um, move that uh, that thing over yonder. Um, I am going to jump down. Well, I'm gonna, I'm going to slowly rise to his, and keep my eye where the Strix Wolf is and. The, and as I kind of stand, I'm going to really kind of puff up a bit to make the presence more imposing. And I'm going to make active my grappler, which is attached to my prehensile tail. Just so, yeah, I have a little something extra. And I'm going to jump down to the other cart. Mm-hmm. I'm listening. Mm-hmm. While keeping one eye at the Strix Wolf, I want to see what the cart looks like in terms of how it would need to be pulled back in order to ride it. And I would like to try to use my grappler so that I could put my full body weight into pulling the cart. 
so that it writes. I want you to make an instinct roll for me on this, because you said you're looking around. You're kind of like keeping an eye on your surroundings as you're doing this. Mm -hmm. I noticed that you're very cautious about your maneuvering. And the only reason I didn't reveal this on your roll is because um, you're up in this tree, Mm. right? I feel like the vantage point for Pyre is a little bit more relevant than um, for you. Okay. All right. So an insight check. Uh, Not insight, but instinct. instinct. Yes. Yes. Sorry. That's okay. Okay, so that is fuck me. <laughs> I don't have a I don't have a difficulty of that number. Um, <laughs> so it is a ten with fear. A ten with fear. Oh, yes. Jesus man. Yeah. Oh. I don't I don't like the eye contact you're making with the camera. Oh I don't like that. So yeah. you sort of you, you take the grappler and attaches to the overturned cart and you are sort of looking around and just kind of keeping a, a, a really vigilant watch as you attempt to move this and um, in a whirlwind of like crackling branches and unsheathed blades a group of four thistle folk jump out from the brush alongside the road the overturned cart was absolutely an ambush um, they stand before you weapons drawn blocking the road Awesome. I'm going to take out the action tracker now because oh, we're going to set up a battle map and they're going to be the first to act. Uh, All right. Uh, let's I'm do safe, it. Bro. I'm chilling. Chilling. <coughs> chilling. All right. So the action tracker actually has to be in reach. And right now they've provided this little paper cutout. I can totally see an action tracker being like a really beautiful uh, CNC, nice, gorgeous thing, which maybe I will make eventually. Um, But whenever you guys make an action, okay, I want you to place an action token on this because this becomes a thing I get to spend. Okay. So every time you do a thing, you put one of these lovely purple tokens on the action tracker. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in front of our battle map or on our Lazy Susan, like so. And I'll put those on there for us, which is kind of nice. So I'm going to rotate this into the camera view so the camera can sort of see it sort of going by there. Um, and then I'm going to set the rest of this up. So let me do that. Combat! All right. So having the upper hand, the three thistle folk rush you. Now, because of their special move, Ambush, they get to attack even though there are no tokens on the action tracker yet. This only happens when they enter the scene, so it won't be like this every time. But right now... They are slashing at you with daggers, protected by armor made of polished stones. So, um, Nathan, if you could help me out, yeah, we're gonna, you know, we can move them in towards the party just a little bit, or we could just say that they are at very close range with the party, okay? Because remember, distance is sort of made up of different metrics in this game. Right. Rather than All feet, five. we have very close, close, and far. And right now, very close is in melee combat range. So these three uh, thistle folk, or I should say all four of them, are going to be making attacks on all of you. So the first one is going to be the thistle folk thief that is closest. Number one. Number one. That is closest to who's right right there in front? Me. Uh, you? Yeah. Okay, so that's going to be EI. It's going to be attack on EI. The dagger comes around. The dagger comes around and attempts to connect oh. with your metal body. Huh. And that is going to be a 17. Now, what is your evasion? My evasion is mm-hmm. 8. Your evasion is 8. So this is a hit. And it's important for us to kind of work out how these mechanics work. Um, so I understand that I can use an armor. <laughs> Point. Well, hang on. You don't know how much damage yet. Okay, right. So okay. let's see how much damage. Oh, so there, understood. So there is a hit there, and that is going to do 13 points of physical damage. Mm. So the oh. first thing you're going to okay. do is you're going to look at your damage thresholds. Okay. <laughs> that just falls in major. It mm. falls in major. So yes. what you're going to do is you're going to mark what? two hit points. Mark two hit points. Or okay. spend an armor. Or spend or an armor. Spend an oh. armor. Okay. That would be severe. So if you spend an armor, you can knock that down. How much is your armor class? Uh, exactly. Five. Five. So, so I if, can use five of those boxes? So, no, 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 no. If you mark an armor, okay. you spend get to one. subtract five. 
from the damage I just did oh, to you. Gotcha. Okay. And if that would knock you down into <coughs> the lower level of minor minor damage threshold, yeah. it would be worth it. That so would. Should do it. Is yeah. It be- is it below your minor at that point? No, it would put me into my minor. Okay. So I will do that. I'll mark an armor. Okay. So this comes around and hits the metallic armor coating on your body, and it does some damage to it, but it does actually manage to stop some of the blow. Where does it hit me? It's going to hit you, like, right in the chest, because right these folk are short. How, how tall are you? Um, I'd say I'm about their height. I'm not incredibly tall. Yeah, I thought you were like a little guy. So it's going to hit you right in the chest. It hits me right in the chest, and I, I sort of, like, sputter. I go, I come back up. And I say, um, voice modifier terminated. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, another thing that's eliminated in this game is initiative. So, you guys, um, oh. I'm going to be finishing my action right now, but once I'm done, you guys can jump in wherever you want right. to. Oh, All right, so weird. second Thistle Folk is going to attack Pyre. Uh, with a dagger, and so it comes around and it swings the dagger at Pyre, and that is going to be a 15. Uh, sorry, a, yeah, 15. Um, what is your evasion Seven. score? Seven. <laughs> so that's going to hit you as well, and that is going to, holy shit, that is going to do 14 plus, hang on. That's going to do 18 physical Holy damage mother of God, to you. Dude. This is a tough Fuck. one. Fuck. Well, hitting us with steel. Daggers, with are no longer one, that, daggers are no longer 1d4 With instrument. seeing that, I'm going to stand up on my seat and just be like, oh my God. <laughs> All right, I am going to... Oh yo. my God. All right, so first, Instant where TPK. does that fall? Where does that fall <laughs> in your damage threshold? Shot. You said it was 18. I'm going to leave on time. Not 18. Uh, it, that is my severe damage. That's severe, so yes. you'd mark three. Unless oh you God. want to spend an armor. Oh, I'm going to spend an armor. <laughs> you can also spend more than one armor. Uh, yeah. Up and to when two. When do you get those back? I'm going to hold off long on that rest, for long a rest. Okay. But you have, to, you have certain things you choose to do so during long rest? How do I uh, you can only calculate do damage? Okay, there you go. Oh. Uh, yeah. oh. Sorry, we have like a stress. I'm sorry, you said 18? Yes. Stress. I can yes. do it. I teleport. Uh, uh, teleport up oh, we should have some combat. Oh wait. Okay. Two. I'm up top. There you go. I'm gonna have so much fucking fun with okay. this character. Don't you cool. keep going? Like if, if it's our turn on the the initiative, don't you keep going until you fail? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Until you fail or until you roll with fear. Is it until everybody fails? Or is it individually? No, if you roll with fear it gives him a Chance to hop in. I can also interrupt so, by spending fear. Go ahead. You continue to hit work on us until you fail. No, all of these have a special ability that has to do with um, their ambush move. Okay, so they're all going to get a turn on you right now. Oh, all right. But once that turn is over, they're going to lay us all out. Right? You guys can go. Yeah, I know. Okay. So, uh, did you mark your damage? I did. Okay, so that would be the first and second ones. The third one is going to be going after um, uh, Morel. Uh, oh. So, Morel, that one's going to come around with a dagger. And... But I'm on the wagon! You're on the wagon? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, all right, so that one is actually going to make its... Uh, it's going to take its movement... Um, it's going to use movement to run up to you. Uh, so one of them is climbing up onto the wagon. Can it's I, going to make this attack. <laughs> and it is going to... It's a 13. No! What's your evasion? Uh, eight. Eight? Okay, so that is going to do... Ooh, I rolled pretty low. That's 13 points of physical damage. That's in my severe category. Okay, so you mark three. <laughs> unless you want to use an armor. Oh my god. I'll... Where's Should I name? use an armor? I'll use an it's armor. It's not there yet. I'm in the carriage. So then I would subtract gotcha. that I was from gonna do it when I 13. Came out. What's the what's your armor class? Five. Five. So five gets subtracted from the That's 13 shy. that I rolled, right? And that becomes an there. eight. Yeah. And does that move you no, into a different take. threshold? Well, yeah, so the number that's the there is the low so. number of the threshold, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, so yes. then yes, I'm in a different. So now you're in major? Yeah. So you would mark two hit points. Oh my god. I'm gonna die. You are a wizard. You gotta run away. 
<laughs> All right, so that's that one. And then the last one, of course, is going to go after... I'm in the wagon. You're in the wagon? I was still in the carriage. I never came Can out I to hit investigate back? or anything. Can I hit that? In a second. Um, I'm turning back so the rest of the money can I have to check to see if there's... A, th these guys all get one move. Then we go. So I want to make sure that you... When an adversary attacks a PC, I make an attack roll, blah, blah, blah. Yes. Okay, so that's just normal. Yeah, for now, these guys are all going to get one turn. Mm -hmm. All right, so, EI, the next one takes a swing at you. Fuck. Oh, that's only going to be a five. Thank God. Okay, did that, so that misses? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that one swings by and misses. I'm going to turn this turn order over to you. Now, remember, each time you guys do something, you have to put a token on the action tracker. Gotcha. Okay. As I was prepped, I immediately want to grapple um, the person that ran up to attack. Um, What's your up? Morale. Morale. So you're going to teleport down? Wait, I wanted to no. hit the bitch. It's a, grapples a ranged attack. Oh. I'm going to pull it up into the tree line. All right, what? so the first thing... Oh, so you want to... your butt silk. Butt how will silk? you grapple yes. from up so there? So I'm up there. It's I shoot my... I turn around and I shoot the silk out of my behind, and I'm going to grapple it around this creature attacking Morel and pull it up into the tree butt line. Butt silk. My behind silk. <laughs> okay, so you, you attempt to sort of butt silk... This um, thistle folk. Um, is that an ability that you have? That's a, a weapon. It's a weapon. All right. How does that weapon work? Do you? I make an attack roll, and if it's successful, I pull it. Okay. So why don't you go ahead and roll your duality dice, add any modifiers that you need to with it, because you have an attack modifier on that. Yeah. Right? I got a twenty-three to hit. That is absolutely going to hit. And what did you have it with? Fear or hope? It's fear. God damn it. I got a 10 and an 11. Fuck. 10 and an 11? Wait, which one's your fear, Dad? Yeah. That's my hope, that's my fear. Uh, why would you oh, put the hope the as the colorful one? Because I like that dice better. It lights up. Oh All right, I'm going to roll my damage, and he's getting, he's, he's, I'm pulling him up. Uh, Yeah, so when you do that, you can roll damage on that. Okay. Bunch. And what did you get? It's going to be uh, four points of damage. Four points of damage. Okay, so that is going to be... Uh, minor, so that's going to be one. And can I keep going? So you're really? pulling that up into the tree, is that right? Yeah. You pull it right up to you. I'm pulling it up in the tree line. I'm not catching it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna attempt to stab him as he flies up here and let him fall. Okay, but this is the essentially the your um. So you wanna now you wanna attempt to stab him as he comes yeah. up. Put another action token on there. Okay. Now I did, I rolled. Oh, I didn't fail, so I can keep going. If I, if I failed, well, other to people hit. can do things too, yeah. but I want everybody yeah. to have what a chance is... to individually put action tokens of on course, there. Of course, of course. So you're in the process of pulling this thing up. What were the rest yeah, of how you? How many are very I'm... close to me? But I thought um, fear gave you the initiative. What's that? Oh, fear does give me the token, and it gives me the ah uh, yeah it gives opportunity me the to jump. Doesn't in. it? Gives yeah. me okay. the opportunity. Questions. Spell cast rules. It's just your regular roll, right? A success for fears, you do it, but there's blah, 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 blah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so I get to make a GM move. Um, so as he is coming up to you, I'm going to spend one of the... the act, how many tokens are on the board? One. One. I'm going to spend that action token, so just take it off and put it in the pile to activate his ability to swing the dagger at you as he comes up okay. at you. So he's going to make an attack roll. It's only going to be a seven. What's your going to miss? Thirteen. Okay, so Damn. he misses with that. But now, what are you doing? How many are very close to me? Uh, you have two that are very close to you. So. I'm going to cast Wild Flame. Oh so I make a spell cast roll against up to three enemies very close to me. A flame erupts from my hand, dealing two d six magic damage. To Wait, any you're I on succeed. the cart, right? Yes. Sorry, just one. Just this one. Very close okay, to you. so Ooh. then to that. To okay, that so one. Um, why don't you go ahead and make that roll? Okay. Scary. I'm so excited. Oh my god. Okay. 21, 2, 3. It's a 23, but with fear. A 23, but with fear. Yeah. All right, so that is absolutely a success. So you can go ahead and roll the damage on that. That's this, which ambusher is really close to the cart? <laughs> Two, three, or the thief? I can't see. Um, the, the, thief. Thief. the thief. The thief. The one got okay. pulled. Remember that. Yeah. Which one got pulled? So I had number two getting pulled. Okay. Wait, was... No, sorry. Number one got pulled. My bad. That's and if you want to put... Yoinked! ...on this to put it up in the air, I don't know if that'll work or not. 
That was eight points of magic damage. Eight points. So that's still minor for the thief. So I'm going to mark one hit point <laughs> on the thief. Um, and you had fear, um, so I'm going to be able to take a GM move there. Did you put an action token on the action tracker? No, I forgot. Put that on there for me. Okay. Uh, I am going to... Um, Yeah, I'm gonna hold off on that. All right, okay. I'm gonna let my I'm gonna let some of my moves build up a little bit. I'm gonna um, these sort of like almost like little jet turrets come out of like my neck and out of my arms and out of my chest, and I'm casting Warden of the Elements, which gives me the ability to embody an elemental spirit. I'm using fire, which means that oh. when an enemy in melee range attacks me, they take one d8 of, of magical damage. Okay. So these jets that are coming out of my body are like literally jetting out Digging fire. This. So I'm basically Fantastic. coated in little fire turrets. Nice. It's stuff. great. Okay. So now does that do any immediate damage or this just sets you up for this future? This just sets me up. Okay. Uh, does that require an action? Okay. Yeah, you have to put okay, an action perfect. token on the tracker. Yeah, unless it says only once per short rest or something. So it's like a cantrip? Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like that's your whole fighting style. Yeah. Oh, I have to mark a stress, too. Okay, so you're marking a stress. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ginkgo, what do you got going on over there? I was I was trying to help Olivia over here with the thing, but... Oh, I'm um, sorry. You want me to move okay. on to Pyre? Do you have something to do? Sure. You go first. Okay, All right. Pyre. Uh, Pyre uh, immediately lets out a barbaric yelp. Nice. Shows his teeth. The bristly purple hair along his silver back that's starting to gray goes up on end, and he swings the grappler to which was the one that stabbed? The one that stabbed was number three, I think. Uh, I believe it was three. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to grab number three with my grappler. Uh, grappler. Oh no shit. Cool. So that what demo? Oh, okay. Nice. Woo! Okay. So in a critical a critical success, you automatically, I believe, gain a hope. Okay. Should do it now. Let's see. So you you mark a hope. You can clear a stress if you have any. Um, oh yeah, I think so. I think you're right. Did you have any stress? Me, I did not have any stress. No. Okay, so now what you're able to do is you're able to add. Now you have um, there's there's damage roll to this, correct? Yes. You can add the. Uh, oh no, there it's a one d six physical. One d six physical. So what you're able to do now is you're able to add as a modifier to your roll the max of that, just like we used to use in our house rules on a crit. So you're gonna roll a d6 and add six to that. Tight. Count that. So that's 10 points. 10 total? 10 total. That's severe, and as you come around with the grappler and smash into this thing, the thistle, like, material that makes up this creature is just like, it's like kind of obliterated. It just shatters into a bunch of splinters, and that one is dead. Which one? Uh, number, number three, three is dead. Number three, get out of here! Goodbye, number three. Goodbye, so, number three. When rolling, you when you roll a double, does that create, um, like, where does that stand in the, the hope or the fear? It's neither. A, neither half. Neither. Uh, okay. Well, you gain well, a hope. You gain I, hope. Gain, I got a hope. Yes. Yes. You get a hope. But um, it, it uh, yeah, it would automatically be with hope. So you gain a hope, you lose a stress. Gain a hope, lose a stress, add the max die roll <laughs> as a modifier. Copy that. Did you put yeah. one on here? Okay. Oh, oh, and you got to put an action gotcha. token Thank on you. the tracker. All right. Ginkgo Fury is going to come out of the car. Nice. Coming out. The door. Uh, Fury. Oh, he's thrown open. All right. That looks like a you frog. You see this frog. Yeah, it's green. Standing in the couch. There's stuff. So Ginkgo, a frog Ginkgo's right Ginkgo's coming there. out of the car. Um, and I'm going to... I'm going to unleash chaos on this uh, thief that's going towards uh, Morel over here. All oh, right. Um, Unleashing the chaos. And I'm going to... It has two tokens. I'm going to burn both tokens on this. 
Um, and I make a spell cast roll. Okay. Can you put um, an action token on the action tracker, please, while you're oh, doing yeah. that? Gotcha. Put an action token there. These are awesome. Oh. That's, um... I, I just realized that I have Whirlwind abil- as an ability. I could have attacked another mm-hmm. creature that was in melee range. Okay. We're learning. So yeah, we're I, learning. I realized yeah, something that I could have done. I could have spent, spent that extra hope that I got to, to continue to continue the attack. Yes. Uh, and it, that very one, very yeah, yeah, yeah I think that's a really cool part of the mechanics of this is that you can kind of just keep the the entire set of actions going almost as if you're like, so mine was 17 with fear. Yours was 17 with fear. Spell casting. Attack. Uh, so a 17 is going to hit. Okay. And then I spent two of those, so it's 2d10. So it's 10 points of damage. Oh my god. It's how many points? 10 points. 10 points? I've totally Okay, screwed. that is going to do... Um, I totally and tell me exactly what you're doing here again. So it is Unleash Chaos. So it says it comes from me, but I'm going to make it come from the staff. Um, I make a spellcast roll against a target. Spend any number of tokens to channel raw energy from within yourself and unleash against them. On a successful roll, roll a number of d10 equal to the tokens you spent. And it's that much magical damage to the target. Gotcha. So well, as that sort of ten. impacts this one thistle folk, um, it knocks him right off of his feet, and you see him kind of convulse for a couple of seconds. I'm realizing also something interesting about this particular creature is it had an ability that I overlooked, which I wish I had used now, Me but that's too. okay, because you have killed this one. Oh, so, oh thistle thief. What Come I like on. about this, what I like Get about this here. is, like, we're figuring out a lot about how to study mm-hmm. the way well, combat works. I just yeah. realized that if I make a successful attack roll with fear, I deal an extra d6 because I'm School of War. Ah, and I did that and, and you didn't. did that and didn't use it. Yeah. Okay, so, all right, yeah. we're, we're kind well, of getting of, it. It's, yeah. Session one. It's session yeah. one. New character. Who session this? one, baby. Yeah. Could I uh, stab the man flying up at me now? Nope. It's his turn. Yeah, because I just got a fear, so, or he just rolled with fear, so that means that I actually get to Ooh. run things for a second. How many tokens are on the action tracker? Four. Two, four. I'm going to take two of those off of there to activate the two remaining um, thistle folk. Now, one Here. is in the air right near... It's not Trifon. It's not Trifon. Swaddler. Who's that? It's not Swaddler. Swaddler. He's right near the Swaddler. And then the other one is on the ground right in front of Pyre. EI or Pyre, right? EI and Pyre. EI and Pyre. Damn. So the one in front of EI and Pyre, since Pyre just made that move, um, he's going to come around with the dagger (laughs) and take a swing at Pyre. And that's going to be a 17. 17 to you. Pyre, what's what's your evasion? Seven. Seven. I rolled a 17, <laughs> so that's going to hit. And I am going to do 16 points of physical damage. Jesus. Okay, so that's in major. That's in major. Damn. So that's going to be, you're going to mark two hit points. Uh, unless I expend another armor slot, right? Mm-hmm. Well, would that reduce? But would six, yeah, would yeah, that drop would, you down below into the minor range? range? Yeah. It was 16, you said? Yeah. Yeah, so we'll bring it down a little bit. Okay, then, yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay, so the armor slot's worth five? Yes. So it's the type 16. Mm-hmm. All right, man. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah. All right. I took one more hit point. Okay. So you took one more. Um, I am also going to... Okay, so... Can I just ask a real quick question um, about armor? Totally. No. So I am no. currently wearing a breastplate. Yes. All right. The breastplate's armor is five. As an effect and a feature, I have bare bones ability. When this card is in your loadout, if you choose not to wear armor, your armor score is equal to three plus double your strength trait, which makes my armor seven without actually wearing the armor plate. Yeah, so you shouldn't so, be wearing armor. The, huh? Fuck? Yeah, it's a, it, because it's a weird ability. It's like, 
it's a bare bones ability. That's so awesome. If I am wearing the armor and I've already expelled two armor mm. slots and I disrobe the armor, where does that leave me in terms of armor? Does that bump my armor up and then like because if I had bare bones and I wasn't wearing any armor, but I had an armor rating of seven? How do, but now the question is, do you get to spend armor slots on bare bones? Because right. that's like your body, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's an interesting... Ooh, Did I break a, some shit? That's an interesting... <laughs> I had to broke some broke shit. The game. <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> um, so the GM and me would probably say, well, let's just talk about this as, you know, armor as a mechanic. Whether it's bare bones or whether it's breastplate, marking the slot means that whichever armor mechanism is helping to relieve the damage would get altered in some kind of way. So it would be our job to kind of like put in the narrative there, right? So if it's bare right. bones, if it's bare bones, it's kind of you. Right. So I would say that at a long rest, you would add up how many armor slots have been chinked and how many you need to repair. And then we go from there. But, totally get that. Right. But being that we're in this combat situation and I started out wearing the armor that had a lower armor rating, if that armor gets chinked to the point where it's unusable, can I disrobe that armor and have and better still armor. have better armor? Uh okay, now I see the actual that's, question. That's my question. Yeah. So so like if I can I run through my breastplate, hoink it off, throw it at somebody and now have seven Seven armor slots? My response or to that would be absolutely three. not. Because first of all, getting out of armor takes a ridiculous amount of time. Gotcha. Like if we're just thinking of this in narrative, putting on armor and taking off armor is hard to do. So that's like when you're on a long rest in but the middle of- But it's just a breastplate. Right. Um, but I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I, well, we'd probably have to come up with a way, right? some kind of cost, for you to be allowed to take that off. Like, if we were thinking of this in turn sequence combat, I might say that might take two full actions. So in order to do that, you'd have to put two action tokens on the action so, tracker. You're, okay. Because basically where I'm at right now is I just took two hits, used two armor slots. Can I disrobe that to increase my armor rating? Still, I'll, I'll still have one what, slot. What left. I'm saying is yes, but it's gonna take me two rounds. But I, or two I would actions. say that it, it would take two action tokens on okay. the action tracker to, to pull that off. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. So. So can somebody throw two actions on the action tracker? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Go, I'm, I'm By the way, at the end of combat, I am allowed to spend those action tokens and get two fear each. Oh fuck. From each action token. And what do you use fear for? What's that? What Wait, each action token stuff? gives you two fear? I can spend an action token to gain two fear. Fuck balls. Damn. <laughs> Is there a limit to how much fear the GM can have? Nope. No? Not that I know of. <laughs> I was going to have hordes of fear. Oh, the GM is going to be afraid. And if Very there were... Afraid. And it's written in there and I am missing it and the comment section is like, dude, you're totally wrong. Fine. But wouldn't it be fun to play where there was no limit? Because what that's going to do is somehow affect how you think about combat, right? Because if you're just gonna um, sit out there and make I unlimited moves, answer. unlimited moves, unlimited moves, and I'm just like, well, you killed off half the combatants, I'm gonna take all that action and turn it into fear. You're sort of putting in the karma pot something really powerful so for you. So I did that. consult Google. Yes. And I found on dicebreaker.com, it says that fear is a core resource for the GM, though they can never have more than 10 fear. Okay. Uh, I thought there was a limit to one video that I watched, a person said. Okay, was, that's actually good to know. I know, I'm saving your life. So. So, <laughs> that's cool. And I did a Thank search you, and found yeah. on Reddit that people are using the bare bones and using armor slots. And essentially when you take your rest, in repairing armor, it's a magical armor. Uh, okay. Like the bare bones is it's it's described supposedly as like a magical armor. Right, it is almost yeah. like 
say, a, a whatever, like a shield or something in... Uh, Imagine. They say you can RP it as essentially like stitching up wounds or something like that. Yeah. Because you're using your magical armor, but you would then still have to fix yourself to reduce those slots. So you're still going to have those slots to spend. Yeah, it makes sense. So right. It's something on here. Yeah, what is that? So the microphones are definitely picking up that vibration. Do you it's the hear phone. That? It's the phone. Up top. Oh, it's the, oh phone. the phone is ringing. Probably my family. It's fine. That happened it twice. Stopped. Okay. Yeah. It happened twice? That was yeah. the second time it did it. Oh, well, that's going to be fun. Uh, yeah. If, why is it not doing Whoops. this? Just... I guess we got to go into, well, live and learn, right? Yeah. Anyway. I can timestamp the second one, but... So... I like that, where though. We, yeah. Where are we at? We're, so where we're at right now Sorry, is... Sorry, I got distracted trying to figure that out. How many tokens are on the action tracker? Four. Four. Four? Okay, and we just had Hire's move. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, yes, because I asked if I could take, if I could disrupt. Right, and you had a critical plate. success. Yeah. That was the role you most recently made. Yes. All right. So, what do the rest of you want to do? I want to stab. <laughs> stab. You want to stabby stabby. You want to stab this guy up. Okay. I stab him. Go ahead. <laughs> um. Okay. So when I attempt to leave a hidden space, I get advantage. <laughs> When you attempt to leave a hidden space, you get advantage on on, on on attack. On attack? Attack, yeah. Okay, so advantage in this is you're rolling your duality dice and you're adding a d6 to it. Oh shit, that's crazy. Yep. Shut. I needed it. It's gonna be, oh my god, it's still fear. Nuts. Seven. It's a, uh... A 12 with fear, does that hit? A 12 with fear, unfortunately, Fuck. does not hit. Oh, what a waste. Man. Good try, though. Um, All right, this sucker's gonna fall, though. So with the fear and the failure, I'm gonna jump in. So how many actions, could you put an action tracker on there? Nope. All right, let's add one to that. Damn it. Um, so much damage. So we have two left, so that one's immediately gonna come around with a dagger and take a swing at you for that move. That is going to be a... Blah, 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 17. Oh, hit me. Um, yeah, that's going to hit. hit the one that's in the fire. tree with you, that is number two. Is that correct? Uh, No, on the Did ground is number two. Did he grab onto the tree? Who's up in the tree? Who's up there? Three. I thought you pulled him up, though. I, I was pulling him to, like, number one is stab in the him. Right. I, like, he, he didn't, I didn't know if he was staying in the tree or not. I, don't, I want him to fall. Oh, so you dro then in turn you dropped him. Well, I you picture I, like, grappled him, pulled him up, and as he's flying up, I'm going to stab him and let him fall. So yeah, you dropped him. Does that does that what 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 are you using to pull him up with? Your grapple. It just I can pull silk. him I can pull him close. Butt string. Okay. Butt silk. Okay. <laughs> so it's all one motion. Up, stab, <laughs> down. Yeah. So this thing's Butt actually silk. on the ground, not near you. Yeah, that's what I yeah. Okay. Would it have taken and he already he already made one attack, so like in that hole flying up to hit me and and attempting to make an stand? attack. I don't know if he could do two attacks before he fell. Right? Who, him? Yeah. Well, the reality is, is your attack by pulling him up, this is an interesting mechanic to try and figure out. Yeah. It's sort of like, well, how would this unfold if we thought about this from the standpoint of the narrative? You fire the silk down, you pull him up, and you make this attack. He also made an attack on me. It sounds like you're doing two things in there. Is that two things? I pulled him up the first thing in combat. Right, but that is part of, that's an ability that you have, correct? It was a weapon attack, yeah. It's a weapon attack, okay. I pulled him up first thing in combat, and then you had him attack me. And then before he fell down, after everybody went, I wanted to stab him. I see. So you had pulled him up, you had him there. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's just hard to, un I'm just trying to like mark out how that's happening. Yeah. So just now, in this last attack you made, mm. you pulled him up, correct? No, it's not part of the attack. I would say well, you attempt to make an attack, so how would you have to attack him? That's what he's saying. Yeah. You I... just attempted to make an attack, didn't yeah. you? And you failed? Yeah. So what was that? Okay, if he's on he the He was ground... there. He was up there. So in the process of me pulling him up, to me, I'm not holding him or anything, but he is flying at me so as I pull him. So your previous action is pulling him up, and this action was the attack. Sta yeah, yeah. Okay, and in between those two things, he tried to make the attack on exactly. you. Exactly. Okay, so in this failed attack that he yeah. made on you, 
Did you drop him after that attack? Yeah. Okay, so he's back down on the ground. So he's going to move <laughs> over, and he's going so, to... So can you put him down the ground? He's going to take a stab at Pyre. Who? <laughs> you were just yeah. like the oh, center. My bad. I mean, you're a big... You're a big... My bad. That's only a six. <laughs> What's your <laughs> evasion? <laughs> That's a miss? That's a miss. Oh, so number one misses. Number two is going to make an attack on EI. And with the dagger, is going to come around with a 16 EI. Uh, yeah, two. that hits me. Okay. So when you're making these, do we have to remove oh. action tokens? <clears throat> uh, yes, I just rolled please. that. I'm not so touching it. Two action please tokens. take two action tokens off. Um, while you're attacking me, by the way, you take 1d8, and I just rolled an 8. A 1d8, and yeah. you just rolled an 8. All right, so because that's going to be. Fire scorches so let me give you the damage that they would yeah. have done to you, and that's you going to be two. nine points of physical damage. Nine, nine? Is, is my threshold between minor and major. So what do so I do it's, with that? then it's major. So then it's major. Oof. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to expend an armor. Okay. So that takes me down to four. Are you using your ability, your fire ability? Is that? Yes. Is it your turn? It's still my turn. Uh, How so many action tokens are left on the... Three. There's three. Um, I am Four going... Four now. <laughs> yeah, because you had to put one on there for seven. that. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So... Um, subtract the seven. Yeah. So this... This... This guy's going to make a second attack on you. So yeah. take an action token off there. Yeah. He's going to swing the dagger again. And that's going to be a six. No. Okay. So it doesn't hit me, but how close would you say it gets? Well, he's within Swing melee combat range. range. So then, um, when an enemy in melee range, oh, deals damage to me. So deals no. damage to you. Okay, mm -hmm. so he so misses. He doesn't take anything. No, no repercussions there. No repercussions there. Um, take another action token off there for me. Yep. And it's going to make another attack on Pyre. That's going to be a 12. Oh, yeah, that's got it. That's got it. And that is going to be five, six physical, six points of physical. Okay, that's less than minor. So that means you get a stress. Wow. Okay. Right? Yes. Mark a stress if you're less than Below your minor. minor Below it's minor. Stress. Okay. Okay, and cool. thank you. That should leave two like, tokens on the action tracker. No, you just spent one more. Yeah. So, so it's one. There's one. I didn't yeah. Think about that. All right, I'm going to turn this over to you. Okay. So, <laughs> who's going? Go. EI, EI is. He's just gonna stand there, and he's just gonna be like deploying blood interface, and like his arm opens up into these two panels, and out springs out this short staff. Like literally, it's spring loaded. It goes like whoops right into his hand. <laughs> yeah, and he, he he's gonna just fucking go straight for the head on this uh, on this yeah, thistle foam. Which one? Number one or number two? Uh, number two. two. Number two. Should we put an action thing on the Yes, thing? put a place an action token but on the That's a fifteen with fear. A fifteen with fear, that definitely hits. Okay. So then what do I roll so to determine damage? damage? Uh whatever yeah, the attack yeah. look on your um the weapon that you're using. A D ten. Ooh. Alright. Uh, um, fear turns so that's a seven. Uh, so as this short staff comes so down so onto this thistle so folk's so head, he's just gonna go so boom. And it actually cracks the thistle folk right in the half. It splits open, convulses for a moment, yeah. and then goes still on the ground. That's You've killed awesome. thistle folk ambusher too. So it's kind of weird because it comes down, and it cracks him on the head, and you hear like the gush of blood, and just EI just going with his fucking mouth. Bunk. <laughs> Bunk. Let's keep it going. We got okay, one left. I want to move. One Wait, left. Who's the one that's left? Number one. Okay. That was fear. Are you, are you going? Oh, uh, oh, yes. Fair. I'm going to take that action track. Which one is on there now? That There's one's the two. one closest. Your number one. And that is closest to Pyre, or? Yeah, it's the one that's at essentially the base of the tree. Wait, so from... is that one alive? That that's one's two? closest to me. So wait, that's coming around to you, and it's making a dagger attack. Wait, there's two? That's going to be a 19. Oh, that's the card. That's, that's yeah, a 19 that's that hits. All right, and that oh, is yeah. going to... Ah, oh, shit. I lost a die. I have lost a die. Die down. That's going to do... Oh, my God, I can't roll. Nine, ten points of physical damage. Okay, that's major. Uh, you're gonna take two points of magic damage. Two points of magic damage. Yeah. Okay, that actually does mark a hit point for me. Ooh, nice. Yippee! Okay. Uh, that's gonna be my move. Huh? Is 
with the first hit point we did for you? No, no I've I hit him. We had hit one of no, he's been hit before. What happens yeah. is when I use all three of my armor... Then your runs. armor breaks. Breaks. Uh, so then it, it's unusable? It becomes unusable. And not mendable. I don't know. I think you can you mend it on a You can long still rest. mend it, but it has okay. to be mended on a long rest. Gotcha. So I'm just using my third one so I can only so I mark one HP. Okay. Um, I'm going to throw it back over to you guys. I want to move up close-ish. Okay. Wizard. Um, you mean so very I close? Be, so I can be in very close range. Okay. <laughs> and I want to cast Wild Flame again. All right. Yeah. Action token. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. Oh, no. Can you... Ah! <laughs> Can you reach that? I'll reach the list. Jesus Christ. My ass was definitely on okay. camera there. Okay, so nice. that was... Um, a 17 to hit? With... Hope. With hope. Yes. That hits. Get that hope, Nicely baby. done. Get that hope. So mark your hope. Except I don't get to do an extra D6 of so damage. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of wish it was with fear. Just kill it. Okay. Moida. Ooh, 10 points of And what are you magic. hitting this thing with? Uh, wild flame, it's a fire. A wild flame, yes. Yeah. So you you produce, you know, out of your small mushroom like, fungal body, yeah. you're just kind of like, ah, and out of all of your pores, <laughs> fire these flames out and ignite this thistle folk who runs around momentarily burning <laughs> and then just sort of collapses as he chars and his smoke sort of billows up off the ground. Get the and you have me. killed And then the I'm last. just going to do one of these. I'm just going to go. Like, <laughs> what's, the, uh, what's the owl wolf Put doing? Put my hands out. Oh, yeah. Uh, you look up into the tree and you notice that the Strix wolf has flown away. Oh. Oh. So mid-battle, that one took off. <laughs> a little victory sound. First that combat. sounds very, we it won. Sounds very Hunger Games. God. Yeah. All right, so listen, um, number one, we have a hard cutoff time for this beginning of Sorry. our session one. Sorry. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to stop here. Um, and I think we're going to come back to this in a session two for this one shot. Um, so if you want to see, you better subscribe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. I fucking mean it. No. Or else. <laughs> <laughs> or else. <laughs> yes. But I strongly encourage it. So listen, thank you so much for watching this. We hope you're learning something like we are about this game. I have to tell you, I'm really excited about possibly using Daggerheart as our key game mechanic down the road. Mm -hmm. I don't know yet, but I love this hope and fear system. I think yeah. it's actually really cool. It is cool. really cool. And this battle system, like, I'm, I already love it. Yeah. I already love it. I just love the way it's very organic and flowing yes. throughout yeah, the table. Yeah, very cinematic. You right. sort of just, yeah. like, jump in and do yeah. what you want. All right, so listen, the music that we're streaming right now with this battle and all of our adventures is provided by Pocket Bard. Pocket Bard. Look forward to putting out session two of this, so definitely come back, like and follow. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you soon. Yippee. All right, Much take love. care. Bye.